Alliances turn to pick. Lich. Alliances turn to ban. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Reserve time. <laughs> Radiant team ban. Welcome back, everybody, here to your coverage of the D2CL game number two of Monkey Business going up against the Alliance. Alliance having a one-game advantage, and we're about to go into game number two with things looking very, very similar. They've now ever dropped very, very quickly, and so we're coming in so deep into the draft. Normally, I try and be a little bit earlier than that, but the Wiz Tiny is back, and so is my co-caster, Clairvoyance. Welcome back for game two of our best of three oh, series. Toby, Toby. <laughs> I hope you don't die on me on the cast, brother. I got a lot more games to watch tonight, and it's well, ironic. I'll be fine, bro. I'll be fine. Why are you worried about Great. me? I'm, I'm, I'm as healthy as ever. I'm well rested. I'm trying to make sure I, I actually get more rest and more preparation, so I feel even happier when I cast Dota 2. Which uh, Toby, no, no matter what you do, man. No matter what you do, when you got that kind of a walk to the studio where you have to walk 45 minutes and get get lost in the middle of nowhere, I'm sure. What? You have exercise every day. Was 45 minutes. Oh, I have, judging from my experiences, man, on the way out, that was what? it was a scary day. No, that's Stranded just, in the middle of no, Germany, no idea. No, that's just because I uh, I take forever to leave my home. I I always find something. I procrastinate way too much. Ah. Uh, so it's, Story it's, of it's only life. a 10 minute walk from my house to the studio. It's very very short. It's a very yeah, wonderful walk you. through the streets of Germany. It was 45 minutes when I did it, but never mind that. Uh, let's, we have. Let's get to our said, game. <laughs> <laughs> we have, as you mentioned, the Wiz Tiny coming back, the Doombringer coming back in this game because it wasn't banned, and Doom Lich, a classic dual lane that's been ran by everybody lately, but Alliance proficiently and mostly. And we have, of course, Alliance to evaluate and see whether they are back this game. Uh, it's it's the Doom Lich, it's the Doom yeah. Lich. Like it's so difficult to do anything about it. Like, it's not even because it throttles the lane too much, because you've got Devour on the enemy creep, which normally you wait till the end of its life, so you don't <laughs> completely push the wave out anyway. Um, and then you've got Sacrifice, which no longer shares experience. So, it's the ultimate greed lineup, but without the risk of greed. Yeah, you know, it's it's basically the, the catalyst and... And the byproduct of a combination when you put one of the best heroes in the patch, if not the best hero, paired up with one of the strongest lane supports in the game, and disaster happens. You know, magic happens. And the thing is, Alliance actually have lost the lane a few times with this combo, but I, th I don't think that takes away from the fact that at level 2 and level how? 3, yeah, these heroes become unkillable. How, how do you lose the lane? Like, you can't... I mean, sometimes, you know, three heroes are greater than two, no matter what two heroes you're playing with. Depending on the three, of course. Okay, and I, I, can I can understand that in a way, but you you should never lose the lane at the end because even if oh, you yeah, come yeah, back yeah. to the lane after dying, yeah, like, oh, they always come back. They always yeah. come back. You have yeah. always got just like Navi, they're always back by the end of the game. Oh, I just to... <laughs> I'm just kidding. I just want to disband that comment. Oh, no. <laughs> I mean, hey, I mean, yeah. I mean, only thinking. remove one piece of your comment. No, yeah. you added another though. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Looks like Bitch Toby's turned up today. Uh, <laughs> Ancient Apparition. Oh, that is not the laning support that I had in mind if you wanted to break the dual lane, but it's certainly one of the best heroes when you want to deal with the Doom Bringer because help. Scorch Earth, regen 50 HP per second. Goodbye to that. Yep. Actually, like the only way you could really stop the Doom Bringer at the start of the fight is but at the same time hitting the Doom Bringer. Like, you might take away the regeneration. But you gotta hit him first. He also yeah. gains movement speed with that Scorched Earth. So... Yeah, you can hit him, and now Alliance actually gets the Disruptor pick up again. So you've yeah. got only lane punishing through throttling, control, and burst damage, because that lid's gonna have a field day with the AA and the IO. Frost Blast will take off half of these lives, once, half of their life points, once you get it up to like level 2, level 3. And then yeah. you got a Disruptor to punish when one of them gets slightly out of position, and also the same counter up against the Wisp and Tiny, which wasn't banned. 
Like, Monkey Business took, took out the Bristlepack as well as the Razor, instead taking out the Disruptor, who was very proficient against them during Game 1. I think, I think, uh... I think Monkey's train of thought right now is that they want the lanes to be as le little, like, uh, minimally crippled as possible. Because when you see the Lich and Doom, they've already got so much good scaling with the Frost Armor as well as the Doombringer and everything he brings. But they also have good lane presence. And Wisp and Tiny, um, one of the things that they do lack is that if they don't do well in their lanes, or if they don't snowball hard, they might just fall. And I don't think last game was an example of that. I think last game, Monkey actually had a lot of good things going for them in the lanes, and then they just lost a little picks and had some item choices that weren't optimal. But between the Ancient Apparition and Disruptor, I think both teams do have options to go for other cores. And here it is, the starter again. I think it, it would have been better complemented with the Witch Doctor, but then they would have had the complete replica of last game's lineup. And that leads me to question if Alliance, they, if they want to run the Juggernaut again. I mean, the way Loda played against the Slaughter, he evaded every Slithering Crush. He rubbed off the Amplified Damage with a spin. Mm -hmm. And it, it's generally, uh, it, it's a known decent hero against Wisp Tiny, right? So they certainly could do that. I'm actually wondering if they want to go down the road of the Prophet. Ten seconds remaining. Uh, if, I don't think anybody else plays the Doom, though. I, I think it's a player thing. Like, it, I think it, Admiral Bulldog. I don't know, I, I remember seeing Loda playing it in the number one position before. Reserve. Oh, have you? I've never seen but it. But it we're, we're talking like years. Like, we're not talking months, we're talking... But Loda's been around long enough, he's played. He's kind of played everything and how hard oh, yeah, he's yeah, played yeah. Doom. I, I'm Devour, sure you can. Devour, attack, hit Scorched Earth, blink Doom, one target, you're good. <laughs> it's just it's not rocket science. Mm -hmm. uh, but we get, we get S4s here to start with. The only reason why I was considering that is because you could always get away with like messing with your lanes even more. Because uh, the Lich Doom can go almost anywhere. You can run him as, like, I don't want to say a dual mid as such, but like, you can move that Lich into any lane you want to. Yeah, he will He will be a nuisance wherever he goes for sure, but I definitely do think if you want to exploit this lineup of Alliance the best way, you definitely go Doom Lich off lane dual lane. Yeah. Like Monkey, they, they picked up the Ancient Operation. They, they have no tools to to repel the onslaught that the uh, Alliance can throw at them with Doom Lich. Again, at level 3, I, I don't see how that AA survives anything. Yeah, he really and does. they will have the EXP advantage. Okay, and it's, Virion, it's Moon's Prophet. Safe lane starter then. Um, again, I, I thought it was good, and I think with again with the Witch Doctor, it would have been it would have been super solid against Doom Lich. At the very least, they won't die because the Witch, Witch Doctor heal as well as his lane presence in general. And Slaughter being the overall tanky hero he is, but Apparition might be a liability, and as I say that, Nature's Prophet. Uh, Moon's been playing a very good Prophet game lately, but again, against Disruptor, Bad Rider, Doom, it's not going to be the easiest Prophet game. It won't, so it won't be the easiest, but they have one big advantage that uh, is different from the last game, where their global is back up again. Ancient Apparition, as well as Nature's Prophet, they work so well together. Get a Wraith King call here from Alliance. Uh, but with relocate for with with the tiny, you're able to get this well crush teams also in in New Orleans. But just this global presence. You took a fight that was four or five heroes. It was never any less than that. So you kind of always won the fight, and then turned into this split push kind of battle. And Alliance don't have a good answer to split push at all. Like Batrider catch out is the only thing you've really got. So this prophet oh. have a lot more breathing space than the last game. I think, um, I mean, I would certainly agree if you said, like, uh, they're definitely not as mobile. I can, I can see that, but I think in terms of, like, split push catching, I, I think Alliance is good because you have to you have to consider the laning phase too, right? It's like, uh, with Bulldog and, and Ake, I think, going off lane dueling with the Lich, uh, Lich and the Doom, it's not going to be a while that the Slaughter picks up, and if he does, they might just end up snowballing the lane and just win off that, but um, the Disruptor, Disruptor Skeleton King, Great King, that's a very strong lane against Nature's Prophet. If I was playing Prophet in that lane, I would be very scared because anytime they stun, they might just kill me with a glimpse, stun, kinetic field, whatever they have. Like they have two ways to cancel the the rift out, and I, I don't know. I, I think it's going to be hard for them to split push, even with the Wisp Tiny and the and the Furion. I think Alliance's catch is pretty strong. They have like stun on every hero. Very scary. I I, I can see your point, man. I can see your yeah. point. I just. Interested to see though if they can catch him because Moon is one slippery little fish. Yes, he, he is. Again, he's been playing a very good profit game. I think like every MLG game I saw, he was like dominating, like six one and eight. Um, just very good awareness in general. More importantly, a lot of farm. Like he's very good at farming on profit. What is and this? they just wanted on top of each. What is this set over on Arcade? It's like the less is more. 
kind of lit. <laughs> it, it, all common. It, 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 I'm, I'm trying to think of what it reminds me of, but it's like it's some really bad 1980s movie. Ah, oh, I see, I see. The Frankenstein type of thing. No, 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 no. Frank no? Frankenstein was a lot. Well, not not directly like Frankenstein, but like the the time, you know, when the movies were black and white and. The movies were black. Oh my god! Ah, uh, <laughs> it I'm was a long time before you know, the eighties. You know what I mean, man. And you know color, what I mean. color didn't arrive until the eighties. Like just because meatloaf arrived didn't mean that world all of a sudden had color. I, I was, it only I had was meaning. I at that time. That's my excuse. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I will semi accept your excuse for now. <laughs> all right. Just... So wait, hang on. Did Bulldog just wait. deny the bottom rune? Bulldog denied the bottom rune. Doombringer came down. Oh, no, Bulldog, sorry. Uh, Moomiander denied the uh, bottom rune from Admiral oh, Bulldog. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, he's a Bulldog. I'm like, what? Yeah, what yeah. Happened? So I'm just like, wait, what, why would you actually do that? He didn't deny himself. I'm, just, I'm coming oh. down there. I'm like, well, there's a treant. So I'm fairly certain I know who oh, the guilty look party at is. Moon. Look at Moon. Did you see what he did? He treant blocked all of his camps so Bulldog can't devour anything. Oh, that is so cheeky. <laughs> oh, boy, the that is good. Is dead. That is good, man. If you got a good creep, Moon's laying this game. Like, it's impossible, almost. Because Bulldog, he got the Observer Ward as well. He would have started basically level 2. And you just run up the Furion with Scorched Earth. What does the Furion do, right? Not a lot. Alright, so... <laughs> Bulldog getting done a little bit, but he's still got RK in the lane. Okay, trying to give him solo EXP so he can get level 2. Yep. That's why he's standing so far. No, that will mean there's not happening. He's just harassing him nonstop. An Emerald Bulldog, even though he does have like this ring of protection, so he's got three armor, he's just like so much damage. This is this is one of those things where like you remember the old face brute prophets? Oh. I'm kinda hoping that that makes a resurgence again. We just harass oh, out of the lane now. Moon might be in a little bit of trouble. The frost blast is dead. Lich already had his level two. He's gonna and well, there's no stun. Because he went scorched earth, this is level two, there's no level death, so bump 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 bump, out you go. Yeah, so that was nice, uh, nice, uh, nice level two coming out of him. Of course, he even put it back to the tower. The only problem that with that is now he has no mana, so he can't tree and spawn treants on the next cycle, and that might just mean he has to go back to base again. Maybe. Fine. Two minimum coming out. Aki's gonna go He's, for bottom. If he gets lucky enough, he gets a regen, but it's gonna be a bounty instead. S4, who gets a haste rune as this bat rider. Oh, the classic S4 haste rune. But he's he's still so low in level. Like, the yeah. CS is there, but no tell is already up to level 3.5 to S4s. Okay, now he's about to crack 3, but this is a dual lane in mid to the solo mid of S4. And now no tell, in fact, wants to get aggressive. They'll throw him up, but S4 with a haste rune. Runs himself away, but first blood oh. is actually... Wait, no. Arcade's oh, actually gonna dear. go down. S4 won't reach Moon in time. And that's gonna be first blood going away. Monkey business. You know, I didn't see that, but... My best guess is Moomiander did some really nice tree and micro and just blocked Ake from going back to back to the Doombringer. That would be my and guess as well. if that was the case, pardon me? That would be my guess as well. Yeah, and that would have been a really, somewhat of a phenomenal play really, but uh, I have to wonder if it should have happened the way it did. Again, I didn't see it so I can't judge, but uh, that's a really critical kill, giving the Furion solo first blood. And again, this is what I meant when I say Alliance, sometimes they lose this lane like this. It's like these kills that shouldn't be happening happen. Um, the Doom is, however, he is level 4. Side. He's playing with this man. Like, he's running bottle against the Wiz Tiny, but like, Crit as well as Nortel are both running magic. Like, what? The Crit's got a stick. Nortel actually bought the full wand. So every time they're getting sticky napalmed, Crit's getting more and more charges, which then they can just tether in it, and S4 gets hit by the avalanche. This is where I was expecting first blood to come from. With Crit moving forward, they ensure the kill. Looks like Wraith King's also having himself a hard time up here on the top lane, as they're going for a one-for-one -one trade off Miracle. Gets a good cross shot, but RK fighting it up, and with that ice, that frost armor Miracle, he can't get close enough to finish the job. He does have six charges, and now give him the crush, but the damage output, he needs to hit him harder, but the frost armor, it slows oh him down gosh. too much, he can't finish the job, and nuts will keep them. Frost armor, the bane of all physical damage's existence. The slow coming out of it is literally a Scotty effect. It's way, way too powerful in some times, and I think that was a perfect demonstration of it. Miracle even solved up there to try and get the kill, so he no longer has that. And life gets so hard for him. 
And they really need to do more on this top lane. Oh. Miracle, yeah, that's a misclick. Uh, yeah. Crushes the air. Um, okay. In meantime, however, mid, this is uh, looking to be pretty disastrous for S4. He has the boots up already, but he's uh, he doesn't have too many stacks in the woods like last time, so... I don't know, man. This is the classic tiny wisp snowballing at the middle line. You're still getting so Bulldog far. with a crap ton of farm on bottom lane. He, yeah, he, just but keep, I think... he just keeps sitting there devouring. His net worth doesn't really match that of the Prophet, because he's behind by about 300 to Moon, who also has picked up that kill. But I think um, I think this is still an ideal scenario for Monkey, because they're sort of winning the top lane in the sense that they're getting these kills and the Slaughter's getting, uh, he's getting levels in farm. And more importantly, it's like the Wisp Tiny don't really have an early game solution on the side of Alliance this game. Doombringer, even though he's getting farmed, Doom is not a good Wisp Tiny solution. Wisp is actually one of the best heroes against Doom, I would say. Anything that can just heal in general. Oh, they're coming up. They want to try and contest no tell. He's just got to set a blast oh, the face. No, which is this not going to make this easy crit as he gets to deny himself up right now. He moves over towards the side. He's still so low. Tether away. Can't even do that one. No tell. Well, okay, it will be Batride that gets the kill, and No tell dragged all the way back into Alliance. Giving Batrider as well as a Lich a kill apiece. They came right, up to that... trying to steal the stacks, but Alliance saw them coming. Yeah, that's that's a throw. Stealing stacks is like, uh, like you can't do it unless you do it with like a Shadow Fiend or something like that. They can just clear the stacks and still be a really powerful force. Because Wisp Tiny, when you use Tiny's combo, it goes on cooldown for so long, and you honestly have nothing else. And uh, I, I think they vastly overestimated their their strength in that situation. Yep, that, that's a lot of return gold for Alliance there. Alliance, how much do they really get back from that? They're actually getting behind. Oh, fly! Are they they finding another one? Well, with a sticky napalm, the tether's gonna come oh, in from crit. Keeps him alive, S4. and now it's S4 getting avalanche and tossed down. Nortile will find the kill, and Fly will barely survive. That's now the third death for S4. He is now 75, well, not even that. It's actually a little bit lower than that. Three fifths of the kills of Monkey. Uh, honestly, as as for he shouldn't have he shouldn't have gotten frozen by the cold feet there. He had a haste rune. That's he, he committed that's for the kill. Mistake. He committed for the yeah. kill is what it was. I don't know. That that was just because uh, that kill would have happened if he just uh, uh, tasted okay. What he came back on? to the lane? There's an avalanche tossed and with spirits. They're gonna get another kill. Uh, that happened. Yeah. He, uh, I'm pretty sure he's tilting, honestly. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he's tilting. Uh, that, that was... That was a pretty big throw. Hey, this, just give give the guy a chill pill. Relax. Yep. Mm. Just come back into the game. There's a tranquil boost now up, so S4. He buys up something at least, but this blink dagger is going to be very much delayed. And the observer ward here from Monkey. Yeah, he keeps scouting out the fact that the ancients are there. They toss it up, they don't commit the avalanche, crit again, no, no tell, cops the big, uh, so, like, the big blast away before they start, and they need a glimpse him back. So that's no tell, isolated. Admiral Bulldog's trying to commit for more, he's going after crit, so no tell will die, and Admiral Bulldog, he can't reach the IO just yet, oh, that scorched no. earth wears off, so he doesn't actually have the range for it, and he didn't commit the doom from the very, very start of that fight. Yeah. So they only take out the tiny, but that's now the second death for the tiny as well, and he was the top net worth monkey. And he still is, of course. And I think I don't blame Bulldog for not using the Doom there. Fly's dead, but this time S4 will be able to claim his life. Sticky Napalm just keep going to work. RK's behind him, and there it is. Lich will take the kill. The top tier one tower does go in the way of Monkey, however, as it was the starter as well as the Prophet pushing together to ensure yeah. that tier one tower dropped. And, and I think I think Monkey are very content with that. I think uh, especially the starter getting that gold. He really wants to get that Blink Dagger as soon as possible, because all those squishy intel heroes and the mid laner being so far behind on S4 as he is, they're going to be some easy kills for Slaughter rotations with the Wisp Tiny. So, Fly, I don't think he's uh, worried about sacrificing his life there. He just went bottom, now he's going to get a quicker level 5 as a result, because he didn't have to heal, and he's just sapping EXP. And Bulldog, he does have the Doom. Still has the Scorcher and the Doom, but I think he recognizes the fact that Wisp Tiny are off the map, and more importantly, they have Relocate. Yep. So he can't just have some mindless aggression into enemy supports right now as he would like to. He really wanted to use that Doom earlier in hindsight, but it's very unfortunate that he didn't. So they would have found themselves another kill. By having Doom up, there is that... Oh, actually, I don't even know if it's really like, causing Monkey to be more cautious on the map. It's already moving over, getting ready to attack. 
So no Teltron walking as Admiral Bulldog goes down. That's the perfect timing, at least the way Monkey sees it. But there's support coming in from behind, so Bulldog thrown up. He's still got the score shots off and goes for the Doom directly on the IO. No more from him. Wisp will still get denied here by Fly. Waits the timeout perfectly, but Loader will also arrive. They get the revenge kill, so it's a two for one trade off. Make that two for two as No Tell finds yet another support. This time it's going to be RK, but Loader still standing his ground. He wants this kill, and he should be able to find it. He's leveled up his reincarnation. Ready to take this one, and with no targeting glimpse back, that's the third time he's died in this manner. The reincarnation will pop. That is fine. It gives nothing back to the tiny, and the lions don't really lose out of much. And S4 is actually searching for more. He's not going to find he's just much here, though. Up the enemy woods. Yeah, yeah, he's just stealing the enemy woods. Very efficient move. He's got the bottle as well as the 10 minute rune that just spawned. And it's a semi stack coming out on the side there. Crit! Relocates for the invis rune to steal it. <laughs> oh, that's that's actually a play. That's actually a really really big play. Well, stop wow. the lions from attacking him in a moment. Yeah, yeah. It also denies the invis rune that S4 was heavily reliant on because he again farming the enemy woods like that. You want to get the rune and just heal up fully, and then you just you what you did was you effectively stole the enemy's woods for free. But that that was actually a really nice relocate. Wow. Presence of mind for that play. Blank, Miracle coming in blank with a blink crushed so early up. Ten minutes it came in for Miracle. The literally will come in and try and get a rid of revenge here. Bouncing into No Tail, move away from the catapult. No Tail. Able to work. Blink is up. Blink is up. Yeah, they want to go again. The ice blast, however, a little bit off target, and Alliance are moving all the way back. Yeah, and Miracle's blink actually got cancelled by the urn. So nice move, my nuts there. But he is. He has Glimpse and Static Storm, I think he's fine. But the uh, Bulldog, you know, he played the offlane and I'm sure he didn't expect an offlane starter to have a Blink Treads by 10 minutes. And Miracle here, he does with the tower as well again. as other things. Then. Blink S4 Crush, is Amplification with the Avalanche and Toss. Yeah, S4 is already down for the count. Nuts wants to Glimpse Miracle back into that ultimate. That Storm going to work, but it's a little bit too much damage coming the way of Nuts. Admiral Bulldog arrives. Doom is back off cooldown, but he doesn't really have an opening here at all. So he just yep, has to let it go. To I kind of almost wish he devoured up the catapult then, because it would stop this extra damage coming into the tier 2 tower. Yeah, most certainly, and uh, it's starting to get real messy for Alliance here. Now their ultimates are on cooldown too, especially the Wraith King ultimate for another 2 minutes and a half. And Monkey, they're peaking. Their snowball is it's rolling in hot right now, and ironic as it is to say, Miracle still got the blink dagger, he's ready to go on any target, and 12 minute rune spawning up, so... Monkey have a lot of options of what they want to do here on out. They can just smoke to bottom tier one, they can smoke mid, they can roast, they, they can do so many things because they're so far in the lead at this point. Yeah. Just keep going, man. Take the picks wherever you possibly can. Like, there's no, it's the no risk game for monkeys. Yes, keep trying to find some kills. Like, they're trying to do it here in the middle lane. The ice boss is coming in. And Loda, okay, they're going to be backed up far enough. Loda gets hit by it. But he's already up inside the dire jungle, so there's no op opportunity for Miracle to get that quick jump over. Well, actually, I take it back. He gets the crush over on Nuts, the relocate comes in, and the Wrath of Nature was going to ensure there was enough damage for that kill. It also touches oh, up S4 boy. a little bit, who wants to get this kill on top. He's going to be careful he doesn't die here. He's got enough money for his blink dagger, and will buy it, realizing he's actually going to die. Miracle with a great TP rotation to top lane gives Monkey another kill. Yeah. Um, that that one's kind of like, it's just one of those things that happened where you're going on a player and you saw you saw an engagement at bottom, so I guess he thought that maybe Slaughter didn't have mana or wasn't going to port, or they couldn't really react for the Iron kill. Yeah. But they did. And in turn, somehow Moon ends up dying again, or dying still. Free goal yeah, for Abra Bulldog. Bulldog. Oh, he did not. <laughs> he did not agree before he died. <laughs> oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Efficiency rating. Yeah, that is. I that that's pretty annoying. If I'm the oh, doom nice and catch. I saw that happen, I'd just shake my head and be like, oh. Miracles in trouble. Nuts. He's thinking about throwing down the ults. He doesn't really want to do it. That ice blast. It hits low to hard. He still doesn't have his reincarnation, so he cannot take any more damage. Hence, Batrider was forced to blink in. As well, let's get that last two off. You know, if he's tread swapped once, once there, he would have died. It would have been a sight to see. Well, luckily for Alliance fans, he did not. Yep. <laughs> and also, luckily for Loader's own state of mind, he did not. Yep, pretty much. Um, a nice tidbit of info, I guess. Uh, Slaughter's amplification damage, uh, it gives vision of the target. So what that means at nighttime is like, if you amp a Night Stalker at nighttime, 
Uh, you, you get his flying, like, you don't get flying vision on Zwagnums, of course, but you get his vision at night time. And the fact that this amp lasts 25 seconds, this hero really is the new bounty hunter of this patch. It's it's very, very powerful. If it's not the minus 10 armor, it's the, the constant vision and the fear that the enemy has to play around with. Very annoying. Bottom tower has been denied. You're living in fear of that as well, as the Nature's Prophet could arrive at any time with almost a completed Orchid. Lions are searching for this vision which monkeys will use to find these pickoffs, but their sentry ward's a little bit off. But observer ward's back behind the tier 2 tower on bottom lane. Yep. And Alliance. And you have to wonder move. how, uh... You have to wonder how Fly found the time to sneak in there. They're, they're, <laughs> grouping, that up, one. they're grouping up to smoke. And not smoke, not smoke this. Okay, are they gonna smoke underneath the obs? I think they're about to. Yeah, yeah, they do. All heroes smoke underneath the obs. And now look at monkeys prepare. Like this, yeah. this is the line. Three hundred. We hold them here. This is it. <laughs> Admiral, Admiral Bulldog is visible. There's your blink out. With the ice bars gonna connect, it won't matter if he gets scorched off or not. He was dead from the moment he hit the ground. As for us going in. Yeah, but he's gonna get all the orchid. However, the Sprout can't control, the better control is coming out from that storm as well as the wall holding in no tell. Now into Lich Ulti, but Fly takes it down south, Lotus in very, very deep here. Blinken chasing after Crip, he's a little bit too far away. As Tiny, well, he'll take out the Lich, but S4 dragging back that Tiny until the crush will arrive. No tell on 40 life, Nuns will finish the job. Reincarnation from Lotus, he's back to all the living. He's going three on one while the rest of his team just try and deal with the slaughter. The three on one, of course, it's not a good odds, and he'll lose his life. For an S4 so low, the Wisp attack will be enough. There goes the Deathrop, the All of Alliance is down for the count. And now they will lose their tier 2 tower as monkeys will add a lot of pressure by pushing. Yeah. Tier 2 tower mid, possibly tier 2 tower top, getting some, some pressure from Moon. I'm not sure if he is going to recognize that and rotate, but regardless, it's still a very, very huge win for Monkey. And again, No-Till picked up the BKB from the Courier at the very tail end of that engagement. And he was only on 40 HP, but I imagine if he was 100 or above, he might have just popped in and walked out of the kinetic field and survived as well. Which means it could have been a five-man wipe, but regardless, Monkey are still infinitely ahead in this game. They just have so many options. Then they also expended Alliance's ultimates as well, aside from Doom. Mm -hmm. The Wraith King, uh, it, was, it was actually level 2 ulti this time, so that's pretty good. It's only down for another 100 seconds, but I think that fight went to show that Alliance, it's very hard to take a fight against Monkey right now if they don't get the jump. And and honestly, at this point, I doubt that they can fight, take the fight even if they do get the jump. Yep. Like, it, they kind of need that jump to go back to the old classic. Okay, S4, <laughs> Alliance are going to get so destroyed right now. Motel, there's your 10 second BKB going to work. Just trying to punch down nuts and he'll move back over to Admiral Bulldog as he'll run himself away. But with the amplification up, they toss him up and punch him down. RK also getting picked I... off by the Nature's Prophet, and it's just a system of elimination. Like, you get, okay, Io denied himself up. He relocated down to deny himself up to a neutral camp. Because he had the... Wait, he didn't have the Doom on him, did he? Because he could have then relocated. Fight. That wouldn't have worked. Uh, I think he was already relocated into the fight. So uh, he so relocated he took out. It back, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he denies himself up to the camp. That makes sense. Yeah, but this is this is looking like a real GG scenario. I, I don't know what Alliance can do to come back at this point. They need something like a heavy objective like Roshan or the Tier 1 Towers. And at this point, I don't see how they even move out, move out on the map. The the Slaughter Presence as well as the Pyrian with Orchid and Relocate, it's, it really has gotten to the point where it's too much. And uh, they don't have enough damage to kill off Roshan as well. Like yeah, with, the, with a Rage King who's got a Blink Dagger as well as a Chainmail. Like this is all you've got on Loader. Like this is a very, very raw Wraith King. Like, the only thing you could hope for is the fact that Monkey would go in for Roshan. And then your Batrider's there at the perfect time, just to get the steal. Like, yeah. In order to do that, you have to get rid of this Observer Ward on the cliffside. You have to restrict vision. It's, uh... It's just so hard from that kind of laning phase that they had, where the Fearing got a lot more than he should have. So, in turn, the Doom doesn't get as much as he wanted to. But more importantly, the Slaughter, just coming out in the off lane, it's a 10-minute blink, getting the tower, and winning the dual lane versus dual lane slaughter a versus great king disruptor something i didn't pay too much attention to but it, the end result is this and of course as for dying like he died a lot at mid just completely unnecessary that's on him and it really really hurt his progression in the game i love so this now, from moon. The... I, I just love this build from moon i i, I want to fly it because i had this conversation with him in new orleans 
Or I'm just like, why don't you get a necro book over and a prophet? If you if you're trying to push and you really want to try and control these mat like these low mana heroes in a team fight, isn't necro the better way to go? As opposed to what was just this always Agadim's Octarine Orca kind of build. But this time he actually built in to the Necro book. It's gonna work wonders after no tell, however. Yes, an avalanche toss like that, it may not even matter. S4 is gonna get chilled, oh, which means dead. he's going to shatter a little bit further down to the ancient apparition. No tell gets doomed up, but they need to glimpse him back, trying the most out of this one. Disruptor all the wall. They can't hold him in. So No tell just keeps walking it off. There's your crush from Miracle buying more space. And No tell now the doom will wear off him. He can go for these oh, magic wand charges so and they'll turn around. I think that's it. Alliance have lost basically everything. The prophecy being forward. Nuts has nowhere to run. And they'll lose the tier 2 tower on bottom lane. And really, they've they've lost this game. Yeah, I, I think they should. Just uh, and what I was gonna say before you mentioned about the Necrobook thing, and I do think Necro is a really good pickup for the reasons you stated too. But it, as far as that's admit, it's not a not a very standard performance you would expect out of him, especially on his bad rider. He's he was very used to in the past, and really their their early game just got completely shafted for for the laning phase. Now, I I don't know what exactly happened to, to put it in the broad perspective, but that was a pretty messy laning phase coming out of the line against this game. Yeah, they they had troubles in a lot of locations, and there was also the space that came out after the early game. Like, the Ancient Apparition began to grab that level 6, the Wisp Tiny actually having space to move, Nature's Prophet not really being slowed down much at all, and I don't know, like, th there wasn't the same punish from the Disruptor as we saw in the in the earlier games. The Batrider had no influence because it took S4 way too long to get that Blink Dagger. I had a 10-minute Blink Dagger over on the side of us, the Batrider, who I think was like 8... Uh, not 18, uh, 16 minute Blink Dagger. And by the time yeah. he had it as well, the first reveal was guarantee kill the Blink Dagger wasn't even going to help him with. And that was it. So, um, a rough run for uh, for Alliance and Monkey looking good and going to force it into, into a decider to see who will move forward into the semi final here for the D2CL. For all the details of the tournament, go to d2cl.org. Or you can join it at .com. We have coverage pages over there, which you can follow through. And there is no second chance once you get eliminated from here. There is no um, full double elimination bracket. We are just doing quarterfinals, semifinals, grand final with a third place decider. That is the format of this playoff. And uh, coming up next after game number three will be NIP going up against Empire. We still have Hellraisers and, and Team Liquid also in the lower part of the bracket. So make sure you stay tuned for all the games. We'll be streaming them all out here on our Joined.ESL Red channel. So stay tuned. We will be returning.